Hey, it's Justin and I'm back, this time with a video about our vacuum cart. So you might ask yourself, why do you need a cart for a vacuum? This is why it's constantly falling over. So the cyclone separates the dust from the air and keeps your filter in the vacuum clean. So we picked up the Dust WD Deluxe Kit on Amazon for about a hundred bucks and it comes with the cyclone and a couple buckets and pretty much everything you need. The vacuum we use is the eight gallon VacMaster, which is pretty powerful and compact and you can take the wheels off to fit in our new assembly. So we use an app called Turnio that's about $2.99 for iOS that lets you scan in with your phone 3D objects and then we can import that to Fusion. We modeled the dust up you did by hand with just some quick measurements. And there's our full assembly. So first, I'm ashamed to say we built this horrible dust deputy cart and didn't realize how huge it was. Uh, so yeah, you can see the, the new version that we made on the right. It's a pretty big difference in size and it was always good to kind of fail first and realize what, how much you can improve. So let's run through the CAD. It's just gonna be a quick overview, but essentially we just made as minimal of a footprint as we could, added some pieces to kind of hold up the dust deputy and some supports. So the whole goal with this thing was to minimize its footprint and to reduce the kind of clutter and problem that we had when they were two separate pieces that were constantly tipping over. You'd have to grab both and kind of pull them along with cords dangling everywhere. So we wanted it to really move nicely. In the making of this, we actually found a really cool Fusion 360 dog bone plugin we wanted to tell you about. The plugin's available for free on GitHub, and it lets you natively in Fusion add holes to corners to kind of alleviate the round corner in a when you want a square corner problem. So here's a little run through of, of how you can do that right inside Fusion. It puts it into the timeline for you, and it's all adjustable. We were super excited about finding this plugin and just really thankful that the, the developer put it out there for free for everybody on GitHub. I mean, obviously, Anybody that's trying to make a square corner with a round tool will probably also appreciate this. And it's just a really fast way to get in there and it finds pretty much every square corner that you might have a problem with uh, on its own and uh, makes it super easy to edit parametrically over time. And it's got a bunch of different uh, versions for mortise corners versus the like centered corner and you can give it a, an offset tolerance. Just really nice features and we really appreciate it. So I hope you do too. So we'll apply the plugin to our shelf here on our own project. And obviously those corners are gonna have some problems uh, coming off the CNC round. So the plugin here gives us a nice opened up corner in that dog bone shape, uh, just with a couple clicks. So for assembly, we'll use some inch and a quarter screws and to locate all of the pieces, we'll pre-drill most of the holes with a one eighth inch high speed steel drill bit uh, we've got a lot of pre-drill holes and it, you know, you don't need screws when you're gluing up everything too, but it really just makes assembly so much easier and faster. And why not? You know, you've got a CNC, you might as well drill some holes and make them really accurate. That includes pre-drilling the holes for all six casters. We brought in a model of a Harbor Freight three inch caster. And yeah, we did actually use six casters and that was somewhat for weight to keep this thing bottom heavy on purpose since we've had so much trouble with it tipping over. Uh, and then it also just moves really nice. You'll see in the video uh, later that it, it just moves around nicely. Let's go into the cam now. One of the things we like to do is save a separate cam file. It just makes things uh, clean and separate so that you have a design file and a cam file. Here's our stock setup. We select all 17 bodies. We select our work axes. Uh, we work from the bottom of the model here for the Z0. We set about a half inch offset from the X and Y and we measured our stock at 0.71 inches. The post-process tab, we like to set the project name, and then in the comment, we like to set where the Z0 is, just helps you when you're at the machine, so you don't have to go back and look at the Fusion model. Let's get into the first part here, the dados. We use a Vortex 1350 half-inch down cutter, has two flutes, it's pretty much our standard down cutter. Uh, makes a really nice top surface cut. So really we just select uh, each of our pockets. Uh, these two at the first here, they're a little bit different sized in the model. So we wanted to separate those out um, than the rest of the data is. We skipped the first page, but we run this at 17,000 RPMs, 280 inches a minute. 
We like to do a couple step downs. We're doing quarter inch at a time here. You can play with the uh, radial stock to leave to fit your material just right, as we talked about in a previous video. You don't have to split out each dado into a separate operation like we have here. We just were trying to solve a, a couple different modeling situations uh, versus the actual material thickness and kind of playing with that stock to leave to make sure everything fits just right. Some of these datas are different heights too, and that throw some wrenches into trying to make sure that everything gets cut just just to the right thickness or the right width so we split them out a little a little more than normal last one in the dados folder is actually a 2d contour with a vortex 1330 quarter inch down cutter and that's going to come in and clean out those dog bone corners with a rest machining uh, checkbox there it looks for anything that's smaller than a half inch which was our previous tool make sure that's on conventional cut and selected contours for your depth. And that's a pretty easy setup there. We run that at 18,000 RPMs at the same 280 inches a minute. Next is a drilling operation with a 1 8 inch high speed steel drill bit. Uh, we run that 5,000 RPMs, 50 inches a minute, do a diameter range so that it diffusion finds all the holes for you. For your bottom height, make sure you select hole bottom and a little bit extra with the drill tip through bottom. The top height, we want to do stock top, otherwise uh, some of those holes are in dados and it will not rise up far fast enough and in your rapid we will break a tip like we did in the last video. This folder is cutouts, so we're using a 3110 quarter inch compression bit from Vortex. Uh, we go stock bottom plus five thousandths of an inch or sometimes more. And we're organizing these by uh, size of part here. So we want to always start with the smallest parts because they will need the most amount of vacuum to hold down. We also throw in some tabs. And then we kind of move up the gamut there by part size just to kind of with the same thought process of uh, you want to make sure the parts stay. So if you cut out a bunch of and lose a bunch of vacuum, some of your smaller parts might have a chance to move. So yeah, we just kind of split out each operation based on what has the best chance of moving on us and you know these huge parts aren't going to move at the end. Our last operation here at the end is a trim operation. We just set up a sketch line on the outside. Uh, here it's showing a little bit of errant but I think the model moved after we actually cut this so uh, it, all it does is trim off our, our dead stock and we'll see that when we actually go cut it but it's a really nice uh, way so you don't have to pull out a saw to cut off all your drop that's uh, unused here. Finally, simulate, simulate, simulate. We simulate to death and to make sure that we know exactly what's going to happen. When you have such good preview as Fusion lets you have, you might as well use it and save your materials, save your tools, and see exactly what's going to happen before you do it. Let's head over to the CNC and start cutting. We have a Shop Saber Pro 408, which means we have a work envelope of 60 by 100 inches by 12 inches tall. It has a 5 horsepower HSD spindle and five tool ATC. So the first tool up here is a Vortex 1350 that does those datos. 280 inches a minute, 17,000 RPMs. We are still figuring out the best way to shoot this video. Uh, we've got a Sony A6300 and a few lights, uh, but it's just hard to light such a big area with a big moving object like a CNC router head with a gantry going in the way of your lighting all the time. So if you have any tips, definitely let us know. We'd be open to hearing. This is the two flute Vortex 1330 down cutter. We run that at 280 inches a minute, 18,000 RPMs, hogging out the corners of those dog bones. We had a little trouble with the autofocus here. Here's what you get afterwards. A nice opened up corner so you can fit your joints together. Here come all those pre-drilled holes with a 1 8 inch high speed steel drill, 50 inches a minute, 5,000 RPMs. And if you use that drill operation right, it will find all the holes for you and you don't have to click on any of them. It's quite a nice little feature. 
Next is the Vortex 3110. It's a quarter inch two flute compression bit. Uh, we run that 340 inches a minute, 18,000 RPMs. The last operation is the 2D contour from a sketch line that lets us trim off that unused stock on the right. We take all the parts over to our router table and trim off all the tabs and clean up the parts and get it ready for assembly. To put this thing together, we're using Type on one glue, which is the red bottle, and then one and a quarter inch screws. And we thought we'd need some clamps, but it actually just fit together just fine. And the screws did everything we needed until that glue dries. At this point, I was already quite excited about how easily this thing moved around and I could tell it was gonna solve a huge amount of pain that we've been struggling with, with this thing falling over all the time. Don't be fooled into thinking there weren't any issues. Here's a quick bungee cord fix while we figure out some actual hardware to use. We, we really can't find a hinge that works for what we're intending with these front little wood wrap around pieces. So we may uh, scrap that design and work on something else, but for now it's staying on with some quick hooks and bungee cords. Ever since I was able to walk, my one of my favorite things to do is vacuum. So let's finish out this video with a little vacuuming. And thanks for watching. And you can get our CAD files and our Patreon if you're a member. So check that out after the video. Thanks.